Hey y'all, it's Laura and welcome back to a Cocoa Vanilla Design Team Layout and I am scrapping three photos today and using the absolutely delicious Legendary Collection, which is a boy themed collection from last year, 2019? I'm not sure, uh, around that time frame, and absolutely love it. It has beautiful colors, it has nice mixed media looking papers in it, and I adore it. And so I have these three photos of my youngest son who is homeschooled, and we had just finished an entire unit on the Middle Ages, and castles, and kings, and queens, and all of that interesting stuff. And then I found this 3D puzzle of a castle and it had all of the working parts inside as well. So it had little people and little areas that were marked and labeled to explain how they were used. And I thought it'd be a great idea for him to put it together and kind of explore the idea of a castle and what it would include at that time. And he loved it. He did a brilliant job. And once he was done, we took a bunch of pictures like you do. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta document homeschooling as much as I document the kids schooling. So maybe even more so, to be honest. I am using my uh, paper piecing technique here for getting a white border around this gray center piece. And uh, the reason I do this is because I use a particular brand of cardstock with my Coco Vanilla Collections because it matches beautifully. It's called Hamilco if you're looking for it. And it's just the perfect shade of white to accompany Coco Vanilla Studios. And so I kind of hoard it a little bit and keep it with the collection and use up every scrap when I'm creating with Coco Vanilla. So I'm gonna paper piece all the way around this nice fresh white border, which is gonna help it pop off of that kind of dark mixed media background. Now, the reason I pulled this back mixed media paper here is because it had shades of grays and blue, and there is a little bit of blue in these photos, but not a ton, and I wanted something that would fade into the background behind my photos. I always want my photos to sort of pop off of the page, and by choosing background papers that don't take too much attention away from the photos, I can accomplish this. And by layering this very simple gray pattern on top, I still get that mixed media look but I don't have it overpowering my photos. So as you can see, my photos have quite a bit of yellows and browns and some greens in there as well. And so we're gonna use some of those tones in the embellishing. So I have this map paper that I really wanted to use. I love this paper. I think it is such a cool paper. The opposite side is a really pretty dark brown wood grain, gorgeous and went ahead and matted all three of my photos with this matte paper. It has varying degrees of red to orange to green and yellow, and those were exactly the colors that I wanted to pull from my photos. And so by arranging those colors close and tight with my photos, it helps to bring all of the attention straight into the focal images. So I am going to arrange these in kind of an off-centered grid, and I didn't want to just do a two by two grid or a very linear grid. I wanted to play a little bit with angles and with unusual patterns. Because I've got a pretty blocky linear background, I feel a little bit more free to get a bit wild with my photo placement. I do like to start with a simple linear background and then make the layout itself a little bit more whimsical by playing around with photo placement and where I put my clusters. So now that I have my photos taped down, I am gonna go ahead and add a title up in the top right corner. So you see the modified grid there. We'll have my two photos on the left and my photo and my title so they are in a block formation. It's just not a clean, straight-edged sort of grid. It's very wild. <laughs> as wild as it gets anyway. So the title is going to be Super Awesome Adventure because he had the best time playing with the little figurines and creating his own little stories about living in a castle and having a war and all of the things that definitely represent the time period. Now I am using clear stickers, but because they are black font, they worked quite nicely over this gray and pop 
beautifully, even better than I was expecting. Even put one on my photo here, and it looks like I've stamped it onto the photo, but obviously it's just a clear sticker. But that is one of the things I love about clear stickers, is I think they're very versatile if you know how to use them, if you're comfortable with using them. Uh, they can look like stamping, and it's just such a cool effect. Now, initially I tried to put this clear sticker onto white cardstock so that it wouldn't be see-through and on the two photos. It doesn't end up staying there, but it could have worked. It just didn't end up working out for what I wanted. And I did like the idea of it though. Now this is a style I use quite often for pocketless pages, which are layouts that I make using a lot of cut aparts or pocket page cards. And so it's that very similar style, if you're familiar with my work. And I'm just filling in the blanks, really. So you see how at the top right, my title leans a little bit out beyond the edge of the photo. And on the bottom left, my photo and the label lean a little out beyond the top photo. So between the two, that balances on the layout. Both the top right and the bottom left are leaning out, and both the top left and the bottom right are leaning in. And this just creates a balance on the page and allows me to get a little bit wonky without it looking awkward. So I'm adding a cluster of stars in the center of the three photos to connect them. I've tucked a cardstock arrow underneath of my title pointing inward because my title is leaning outward and I want to make sure that the photos are getting the focus. So by pointing the arrow inward toward the photo that helps to guide the eye that direction. I've put that yeah boy piece at the very bottom next to my journaling because the journaling is the second thing I want you to see. Photos first, then the story. And just playing around here at the bottom to see if I could fit in that clear sticker somewhere but it just doesn't fit. It just doesn't line up quite as nicely as I was hoping. And so I end up saying, nah, maybe next time sticker, not this time. I added a word phrase sticker underneath the epic and I chopped it in half so that it would tuck in perfectly underneath of the clear sti sticker that says epic. So really this is about filling in the blanks. I don't want to leave any trapped space. And so that is space where there's blank areas that are in between other elements on the page. So at the moment, I have trapped space under my title and before that photo. And I will fill in that space with a word phrase sticker, I believe. But I also have a little bit of trapped space down here on the left where my photo stair steps down. And it's not really trapped, but to my eye, it did look trapped. And so eventually I will add an arrow at the end there and it just points down to the journaling. So I have one arrow pointing into the photos and one arrow pointing down to the journaling. But for right now, I've pulled out a whole bunch of fussy cut and punched stars. This is quite often what I do with the scraps from Cocoa Vanilla Collections because I absolutely love every single one of them that I can't bear to throw away the scraps from Cocoa Vanilla. If you follow me, you know I am not a scraps hoarder. I tend to get rid of scraps and not until I can't use them anymore. If they're smaller than a three by four card, I typically pitch them. But in, when it comes to Cocoa Vanilla, it's a different story. <laughs> And I have a tendency instead to punch them into shapes. And for boy collections, I tend to go for stars. And for the more floral or feminine collections, I tend to go for hearts. But I tend to punch those into shapes so that I can still use them as scattering pieces around my clusters. So in this case, I've created a diagonal flow from the top left cluster, a center cluster, and a bottom right cluster. And I really like the way that that looked. But I am also going to add an even smaller cluster up next to my title, but that made four, and it looked a little weird to have four, so I opted to go ahead and create a fifth cluster in between the label and the yeah boy, so that has a diagonal coming the opposite direction. And so I have two diagonals of clusters going either way in an X on the layout, and that allows your eye to travel through the layout, see all of the photos and the details without drawing a lot of attention away from them. Now I'm going to add some 
gold nouveau drops as my controlled splattering and i'll come in with some gold ink spray for some uncontrolled splattering around my clusters now i do tend to more simply embellish my multi-photo layouts because i don't want to draw too much attention away from the story that they are telling not that you could draw much attention away from these photos because they are epic that's it for me guys hope you enjoyed it until next time bye